up out there friends and family it's your boy the motivational teacher to the masses bringing you again another one of these motivational mondays i hope everybody out there has that week off to a fresh and brand new start and everything is working in your favor right now thank y'all for joining us tonight hey vaniqua prompt as always hey if you all would out there for all my replayers please give me about a minute minute and a half as i share this to all 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 of my contacts i want everybody i know to be blessed so if you can take your top five relationships share this video with them because you know how we always say it if if you if uh if they don't grow with you they can't go with you and for people i'm starting to see the eyes come into the room and if you're coming into the room man say what's up to your boy say what's up to your boy and i'm shooting this out real quick uh and i look like i don't see facebook's if somebody out there on Facebook, I know I see some eyes on Facebook. If you can, please uh, say something. I want to see if the messages are going through on Facebook. Uh, last week, they didn't go through on Facebook at all. So I just want to check and see if they're going through on Facebook. If you're out there, shout, shout your boy out. Let me know how your day is going. Let me know how your week is going. I know we're off to a, a fantastic start. Tell Hey, like my, my grandmother used to say, tell me something good out there. I know something good out there is going on. I'm sending this to my contacts right quick. Give me about another 30 seconds. And we're going to commence to this bread breaking. All right, let's go. Let's go. Let's see. Faith. Uh oh, my bad. Let's see Facebook out there. I got to look at these comments live. Hey, I see Rajetta out there. Hey, I see Virginia. Virginia, thank you, y'all, for hopping on. I'm looking at my feed right now. Look like Facebook is not coming through, so I'm going to have to look at it on my phone. So if I'm going, thank you, Vaniqua. If I'm going in and look up and down, it's not that I'm not engaged. It's just that I'm checking my messages on my phone so I can make sure that I pull in some of Facebook comments as we're having this conversation, okay? I got to tell you all, I've been going back, listening to the last 10 videos this week, this past week. Hey, hey, IT, thanks for joining us. I've been going back, listening to these videos, the last the last 10 videos. And I got to let y'all know, it has been some bread breaking going on around here. So I thought tonight that I could let the bread break and breathe. And I want to hear from you all. We talked about many habits uh, the last couple of weeks. We talked about external stimuli uh, the last couple, in the, within the last two messages. We talked about uh, trusting your eyes. Watch your eyes because sometimes your eyes can deceive you. And I know a lot of people tell me we live by our tuition and not, uh, live by my tuition and intuition. And I'm like, sometimes you can't trust your intuition because a lot of times it feeds your information that's rooted in your past. We talked about um, anchoring many habits, which I thought was phenomenal as I listened to that message this morning as I was working in the gym. I, ladies and gentlemen, like I, I'm, I'm going on record to say this. You haven't heard me say this, but I'm going to say this, and I would love to see. I, I think we on Waging the War, I think we on this Awaken Your I Am series, I think on Bridging the Nation, this is just my opinion. And I might be somewhat biased, but in my opinion, man, this content is next level. Thank you, Jacqueline, for joining us. Jacqueline Jackson, thanks for joining us. I started to see Facebook comments now. Thank you for joining us. But this information that I've been slinging around here has been next level. And for tonight, for a brief moment, I want to hear from you all. Vaniko, I saw you went back three or four times and watched the last video. I want to hear from you all because what most of us do we hear a word and we never become doers. We hear and we never become doers. If we hear a word and never become a doer, it's almost like that word has fallen on deaf ear. What's up out there, Facebook user? If you would, just hit put your name in there. I think saying great evening. Uh, it might be Pat, might be Tina. Usually they, they don't show their name on there. But I would love for us just to start, not only am I hearing, but I'm also becoming a doer because doers are the ones 
that will walk in the promised lands. Doers are the ones that get next level manifestation just because I hear it and I know information. I got to tell you, I'm going to say this right here. What's up, Keith? Thanks for joining us, bro. Thanks for joining us. And Keith, I, I, you had some phenomenal com uh, comments on that last video as well, bro. I appreciate you for chiming into this conversation. What I do know is that most people, you hear people say knowledge changes lives. Boy, I should put some lotion on them ashy hands. I should have looked at them before I came downstairs. <laughs> yeah, I called myself out on a national broadcast. I need a, I need some jergens. <laughs> but, mo but the reality of it is that we've heard that knowledge, that knowledge is power. Knowledge is not power. You can have all the knowledge that you want. It's applied knowledge that equals power. If I if I know how to get from, let's say, from Georgia to New York, and I can know how to get there all I want until I'm able to apply the knowledge, I'll never get what's waiting on me in New York. And I think some of us start, we get information confused with action. Because I know it does not mean my life is going to be better. But now when I activate the knowledge that I know, thank you, Auntie. When I activate the knowledge that I know, I start, I can now start seeing manifestation of it. I can know right now that, you know, and, and this is just an example. If I drink too much, I, I, I eventually know the cirrhosis of the liver, if I live long enough, will will find me eventually. If I'm drinking, if I smoke lung cancer, if I'm eating all fatty foods, cardiovascular disease, it, it, it's no way if, I, my, if my blood checker, blood, blood pressure goes unchecked for a long period of time, the results are predictable. The results are predictable and we can know we have high blood pressure. And it, if it does not change our behavior, then our, then our behaviors determine our level of success or it determines our outcome. Like we cannot exchange and this is not what, what I was going to talk about tonight. Thank you, Rajetta. Knowledge of, is applied. Knowledge applied equals power. That's so true. Angelique, what's up? Thanks for hopping on here. If y'all would, we're up to like 15 eyes right now. If y'all would, go ahead and send it to five other people while we're in this intro. Go ahead and send it. Go ahead and tag four or five people to this video. Go ahead and tell your husbands and your, your cousins and your siblings to hop on here now because tonight I want to talk about some more about these mini habits. But before I get into many habits, the bread that's been slung, been slung through these airways, I'm telling you, if applied for a period of time, you will see change in your life. I, I am, I man, I will hang my hat on that. Thank you, Keith. I will hang my hat on that. If you're listening and you and you apply the knowledge, you become a doer. I'm telling you, your life will drastically change forever. We talked about last week, those many habits, anchoring those many habits with a habit that we do unconsciously. We talked about that last week. I won't get in the chat box. How many of you I saw where Vaniqua commented on a, on a video earlier this week where she changed a behavior? She, she practiced a many habit. How many of you out there this week? Hey, Kristen, thanks for joining us. How many of you all out there this week practice a mini habit? Like maybe, and I'll redefine mini habit. Mini habits are those small, small decisions that we make that can eventually have a big impact. They say, don't despise small beginning. A mini habit is a small beginning. For example, if I say, okay, I got to get up before eight. Okay, so why not? I'm not going to set my alarm clock for six the next morning. Why not set it before 745 or 750? And hopefully see some change. And then now I'm moving my time back. That's seven going from eight to seven fifty would be a small change, but eventually it would it would turn big dividends. If I wake up 10 minutes early for the next 10 years, how much time have, have been restored to my life that the canker worm would have stolen? Or if I save ten dollars a month, if I save ten dollars a month for the next 10 years. How much money have I saved all because I cut one Starbucks coffee or I cut one Chick-fil-A run? Like, like, it, like I'm telling you all, we're all looking for the big goals and the big dreams. And I want the big this and the big that. The big this and the big that just doesn't happen. We have to anchor those dreams and we have to anchor those, those goals inside of many habits. I love it, Keith. Keith said... Um, 
Key said, I practice not to procrastinate. Key, that's a great one. That's a great one. Procrastination. And, and Keith, you're not the only person that that um that 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 practice procrastination. It's human nature for us to put off for today. It's, it's human nature. If it doesn't impact me uh more so today, we'll put it off until tomorrow. And procrastination and and, and the law of averages says the longer you put something off, the less likely you are to follow through with it. I got some people chiming into this conversation. Hey, Kristen, thank you for joining. Kristen, when I used to be her youth pastor a long time ago, and now she grown, got degrees, and doing very well in the world. Thank you for joining us tonight, Kristen. It means a lot that you will stop in on us. I'm glad you're here tonight. It, it's so good to see people, man, that, you know, that, that that I see growing and going and just say, man, like, I remember, I remember when she was a little 13, 14 your old girl trying to figure it out and now to see where they are today. But I say that as a natural ex Hey, hey, Lonnie, how you doing? Got, I got Lonnie on here on YouTube. Now that's another, that's another person that's taking this world by storm. Like she's doing, like, I, I love seeing the progress of people. Like I, my aunt, uh, Alana's mom, she was the first person in our family to get a degree. And then my aunt Chris right behind her. Then the second generation, there are more of us with them. And then London just said, okay, all of y'all got degrees, but now I'm going to go get me a PhD in biology, a PhD or epidemiologist. And she took it to the next level. How motivational teacher. I I'm telling you that there is something when you see someone that looks like you, someone with your background, when you see that they can go, it gives you just a little bit more belief that the great I am who awakens your I am can do the, the same through you. And I'm telling you, the more we start to believe, and I talk about this all the time, the great I am awaken my I am. Hey, what's up, Devon? Thank, thank you for hopping in here, bro. And the more and more we are having these conversations about the awaken I am, the more and more I'm starting to realize that the only gap that a man has is truly seeing himself as God sees him. There is no other, there's, listen, man, I'm telling you right now, there are no other gaps in your life to the fact that you just need to change, upgrade how you see yourself. The reason why we don't act, the reason why we don't believe is that there is a level of unbelief on the inside. I believe, but help my unbelief. There's a level of unbelief on the inside of us that attracts us to that thought process that makes us believe that success is not inevitable in our life. Oh yeah, that's a bread breaking moment. Thank you for sharing it. Thank you for sharing it, Virginia. Thank you for popping on here, Kaniki. It means a lot. Thank y'all for listening tonight. And tonight we let we let this bread break and breathe. We let the bread break and breathe. I want to hear from you all. I want to hear, you know, how's your life improving over the last six months, over the last 12 months? How, what areas, what areas, areas in your life have you grown most from your awakening? Imposter syndrome. I love it, Auntie. Imposter syndrome. I want to know. I want to hear from you all. Let me stay on my live chat so I can. Um, what's up, Chris? So I can see the, the comments. Devon, my boy, just said I. He said he didn't graduate, but I went and got my GED and I made it. And I made the decision to get my GED. <laughs> Bro, you need to be celebrated for that. You need to be celebrated for that. You made a conscious, deliberate decision to say, okay, I am going to get my GED. And you got your GED. That's progress. And I love, like LaVar said last week during the live, sometimes, sometimes we try, we look for perfection and not progress. And see moments like this, man, I got chills going up and down my arms right now, bro, because I want to celebrate you. That is for, thank you, Vaniqua. That is phenomenal that you stood on your truth that, that, that I, I am more that, than what I appear to be today. That Oh, yeah, it's frightening that I don't know how old you are, bro, but it's frightening that I, I haven't gone to school in X amount of time. And I, I maybe I haven't opened books in X amount of time, but I see myself as a high school graduate. And since I see myself as a high school graduate, I can make a decision that's in line as a high school graduate. I got Facebook use. I think that's key. Said it's not your beginning, it's your ending. That's why, oh my, ooh, 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 I love the fact when people judge you 
based on how they met you. And I think, Keith, that, that point is not your beginning, it's your ending. See, when you see carnal minded people or people who don't, who don't, whose I am is not awakened, or people who don't see themselves as a greater entity, they love telling other people what they can or cannot do. And people love to call you, call you. Oh, my bad. Thank you, Pat. Thank you, Pat. And people love to call you how they met you. They love to say how, oh, I met that person. They was this. And they don't know that you are you are evolving. You just, man, come on, man. You are evolving. And that's a great example of evolution in our lives. Bro, I celebrate you. I clap. Hey, I want to know now what's next. Now that you've accomplished that, I know that there's something bigger, there's something greater, there's something out there even more that you want. Uh, I got my cousin Lonnie chiming into the conversation. My mini habit for 2022 was to, uh, to do something toward my dissertation every day. Now I'm on track to graduate earlier than planned. Come on, Al come on, Alana. Come on, Alana. Greater is on the inside of you. She made a, again, a conscious, deliberate decision. I hope y'all, I'm going to get into your Facebook. I'm coming back, Facebook. I'm coming back. I want y'all to see that, that, that it's, it's in the decision making. My wife, we came back from vacation um, two weeks ago. And she was like, okay, I got too big this summer. She made a decision. Um, um, uh, she made a couple of mini habits that she changed. I'm not drinking sugar. I'm not. I'm not eating eating this. I'm walking every day. And she dropped twelve pounds in a matter of no time. Why? Conscious, deliberate decision. Conscious. Somebody get in that chat box. Conscious, deliberate, intentional decision. And they rooted it with. A mini habit. In order to get my GED, I got to study. In order for me to get my PhD, I got to work on my dissertation every day. And by the, but I didn't necessarily say I wanted to do it early, but by the fact of me anchoring my decision with a mini habit every day. Yeah, I might not do two hours a day. I might not do three hours a day, but every day I'm doing 20, 30 minutes. I'm opening the book. I'm writing a sentence or two. I'm rereading a paragraph. I'm editing a paragraph. Every day I'm doing something. It, it, it's not, see, we're looking for the big bang. We're looking for the big bang. There are, oh my God, I got to say this. They're in the kingdom. In, in, in success, there are no big bangs. Lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Success is small behavior, small, and come on, thank you, Vaniqua. It's conscious, deliberate decisions done day in and day out that gets you to the place where you realize, like you don't even realize how much ground you covered in the last year because you've just been focusing on winning the day. If I win enough days, let me say it this way. If I win enough seconds, I win more minutes. If I win enough minutes, I win enough hours. If I win enough hours, I win enough days. And if I win enough days, I will absolutely win enough years. Oh, five years. I want, I want to be a seven figures. I want to be a, a millionaire. Nothing changes until you change. Better the end of a thing than, at, than the beginning. Come on, speak that. Your ladder shall be greater. All right. Uh, what's up, Lurch? Thanks for joining us, bro. Uh, Kristen chimed this conversation from, uh, from YouTube. Standing on God's promises and trusting his timing. Love it. Love it. Love it. Standing on God's promises and trusting his timing. It's what the great I am who awakens your I am wants to do in and through you. And I do, do think sometimes when things don't happen in the timeline we expect, we begin to waver. We begin to we begin to doubt. We begin to have unbelief because in our mind, we have a timeline that we've stuck to. And we know the great I am who awakens our I am is not bound by time. He's not bound by time. So trust in his timing, even when, even when it doesn't look favorable, I'm going to keep moving toward it. Even when it doesn't look like I'm going to win, I'm going to keep pushing. And I, I love the way that Langston Hughes says, I'm going to, I'm climbing. What do you say? I, all, it's a, uh, life of me ain't been no crystal stair. 
But all the whole time, I've been climbing and pulling and making my way. Life for us doesn't have to be a crystal stair. It's no, it's no level of judgment on how successful we can or cannot be. It's not, somebody said it earlier, it's not about where I started. It's about some 30, some 60, some 100 fold. And that's based on the level of intention, deliberate decisions that you're making consciously on a daily basis. Boy, that's a bread breaking moment right there. Uh, Angelique chiming into this conversation. Grand evening, everyone. I've been learning to focus on building my vision and how to stay how to stay connected to my I am. I love what you just said. And here's the reality of of life and of success to someone who believes or to a kingdom minded individual. There's no lack of belief in what God can do. That's why I love what you just said, Angelique. Say connected to my I am. There's no lack of belief of what God can do. The challenge is, can he do it through me? The challenge is, can he do it through me? And I think most of us, or most big dreamers, or, or most people, or most of us that have big goals, have big dreams, like we know what he can do. But the challenge sometimes is, can he do it through me? And it makes it difficult to believe through me because I know my own personal thoughts. I know my own personal decisions that I've made in the past. I, I know I've said some things I shouldn't have said. I know I've done some things I shouldn't have done. I know my hands been places where they shouldn't have been. So a lot of times it's easier for me to believe that he could do it in somebody else whose thoughts I don't know. Who, 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 who's speaking, I don't know. What they're doing behind closed doors, I have no idea. I know the version of themselves they present to me and the version they present to me seems as though they will be a better fit for the job than I am because I know my thoughts. I know my ways. Surely he can't want to use me to conquer, uh, 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 to conquer homelessness. Surely he don't want to use me to get the word to the masses. Surely he can't use me to, 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 to treat um, whatever disease, Dr. Alana. Surely he can't use me to be the director over this whole hospital system. Surely he can't use me to fly up and down the road 800 miles every two weeks to, to change the world. Surely, and, I, and you are the exact person that the great I am wants to use because of your, your humility. Because of, you know that I can only do these things through him who awakens my I am. Surely, I say it right. Surely it's you he wants to do those things through. Surely, I see it. Surely, I will take Moses who stutters and I will tell Moses to go tell Pharaoh to let my people go. And Moses said, I'm not an eloquent speaker. He said, Moses, I don't need for you to be eloquent. I need for you to be a yielding vessel. I'm not asking you to do it, Moses. My, my The great I am is going to do it through your awakened I am, Moses. I'm not asking you to be great. I'm asking you to believe. Oh my God, that's a bread breaking moment. That is a bread break. Moses, I'm not asking you to do it. I am at, what in your hand, boy? Throw it down and pick it back up. And see tonight, see tonight, I'm asking you right now. The verse said, in my hand was a GED. I never threw it down and picked it back up. I didn't know it resided in my hand. At the same time when Moses had that staff, he didn't understand what he had. It was an instrument that was useless. Oh my God, all he could do, it was an instrument that was useless until the great I am wrapped his hand around his awakened I am while holding that instrument. Notice that when Moses picked that staff up, nothing changed from the time when it was a, a serpent to the time it turned back to a staff. Nothing changed inside of, and nothing changed externally with Moses. It was still Moses' hand. It was still Moses' five fingers. It was still Moses' brain's function. It was still Moses' uh, um, uh, senses that created it. Nothing changed externally, but something changed internally. And the moment we start having this shift from believing that I have to produce the work to believing the great I am can do it through me, Oh, yeah, I'm going somewhere, Pat. I know that's you right there, Pat. I'm going somewhere tonight. That the moment I start believing that I know, I know, I know I got issues, but that's who he wants to use. Oh, my God, God. I, I wasn't a valedictorian of my class. Well, don't, I, 
I'm not qualified. Oh, I don't have a college degree. I, I, I don't have six figures in the bank. You asking me to go start a nonprofit organization. I, I don't have a great relationship with the bank and you want me to start a, a, a daycare. I don't have a great relationship with the big wigs on the city council and you want me to go build a shelter. Yes, you. Yes, you. Yes, you. Who else is more qualified to, to give the great I am the glory than you are? You're the one he wants to use in order to make the miracle. You're the one he wants to use to change the lineage of your family for decades and years and years and, and, de and, and generations to come. You, like Les Brown said, you are the one. It's no more passing the buck talking about what I don't have. And I, and I, I, I it, Y'all know I'm a motivational teacher to the, to the masses that I speak council coach a lot of hours. And the majority of the conversations I have are always around what I don't have. People, we, we, we fail to look at what we do have. We fail to look at what we do. What you have is sufficient enough. You just need to take that, throw it down and pick it back up because that's the instrument he going to use. Your gift will make room for you. You're too busy. See, we're too busy trying to eat at other people's table. Oh, I'm waiting on I'm waiting on ET to invite me on his forum. Oh, I'm waiting on Ink me and Ink going on the road together. Oh, I'm waiting on Les Brown to pull me on his live. Oh, I'm waiting on TDJ to invite me to the Potter's house. No, no, no. I ain't waiting on somebody else's table. I'm building my own. I'm building my own. I'm not waiting on anybody to dial my phone number to, 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 oh, I got, I need my big break. I don't need no big break. I get my big break every day when I'm intentional, deliberate about what, intent, about the decisions that I make. I create my own big break through the great I am who awakens my I am. I'm not looking for no genie in the sky because I'm doing the work every day. I'm doing it when I don't feel like it. I'm doing it when I don't have the results. I'm doing it when I don't see the eyes. I'm doing it when I'm sleepy. I'm doing it when I'm hungry. I'm doing it when I'm tired. So I'm not looking for my big break comes every day when I do the work when nobody's looking. Boy, I just broke bread. I don't, I, I can, come on, man. I don't need 5,000 people to sit here in order for me to do what I do. I don't need 4,000 eyes in order for me to do what I do. Why? Because I'm in the process of becoming. And in the process of becoming, sometimes it ain't going to look like what you see on the inside. And the challenge of the test is, will you produce, will you give the same energy, will you give the same intensity when you don't have and don't see what you think you should? Oh, that's a bread-breaking moment right there. That is a bread-breaking moment right there. You created 25 pictures of art and nobody's buying them. Will you go create the 26th one? You failed that test four times, five times. Will you go back and take it a six time? You interviewed five, six, seven times, didn't get the job. Will you go back an eight time? Oh, that's a bread breaking moment right there. You ran, you ran, you ran for city council. You didn't get it. Will you run back again because you felt that call on the inside of you? See, winning doesn't happen in favorable conditions. Everybody wants the sun to be out every day. Everybody wants sunshine. Everybody wants rainbows. In order to have rainbows, you got to have some rain. In order to have some rain, you got to have some thundering. In order to have some thunder, thunder, you got to have some lightning. It's in order to have some, some lightning, there are going to be some days you're going to have storms in your life. And the question is, will you show up? Will you show up when there's a cloud the size of a man's hand? Will you show up? Do you can you can you still smell rain when you don't see when you see a cloud the size of a man's fist? Oh, that's a bread breaking moment. I, when I when I get my my hundred thousand dollars, I'm gonna go ahead and give money to the poor. Oh, when when, when I get my million dollars, ooh, I'm gonna bless a lot of people. You'll never get it. You'll never get it because if he can't trust you with the ten thousand, you can hang up the millions. I just broke bread. Well, ooh, when I get my healing, I'm I'm, I'm gonna do a lot more work down there at the homeless shelter. When I, you'll never get it. See, people who get that healing, people who get the million dollars are people who already have the behaviors of somebody that has a million dollars. People, people, people that sit by and just waiting are the people that can always be sent by. Well, you know, if it was, I've been here 35 years by this pool at Bethesda, I'm just waiting on somebody to throw me in the water when it's trouble. You'll sit there another 35 years. 
because you're sitting there waiting on everything to be favorable. And the great I am says, no, I move when it's not favorable. When everybody thinks you're at your wit's end, when you are out of your natural ideas, I move. That's a bread breaking moment right there. Oh my goodness. I'm, I, boy, I need to stop this, rewind it back and play it for myself. Sometimes you gotta be able to encourage yourself. How you know you growing? Let me tell you this. How do you know you growing? When you see yourself evolving, when you go back and you listen to the way you talked 10 years ago and you hear how you talk today and it's nothing like you talked 10 years ago or when you're doing your art, the same art you did five years ago and you go back and you look at your art today, you're like, man, look at the difference. You say, man, like growth, like growth is something else, but it's too many people that want results before they've been through the process. And I'm telling you, the process is what makes you Great. The process is where you find your secret place. All right. I got people chiming into this conversation. Speak tonight. Feed, baby, feed. You know I'm doing it. Bill, baby, bill. That's my boy Martin Luther King said. Bill, baby, bill. Not burn, baby, burn. Bill, baby, bill. That's the that's our level of conversation. Uh, Pat said, uh, yes, Les Brown's going to be people at your table. Three fish, five loaves of bread. I'm breaking it. I'm eating. I'm eating. I'm trying to tell you, too many of us are waiting on somebody else to do it. Oh, uh, once this person do it, or I want to rock. Oh, this is going to sound so bad. Oh, I, I almost went there. I almost went there. I almost went there. I ain't going to go there. I'm not going to go there. I'm not going to go there. Let me get some of these messages. <laughs> Let me get some of these messages. I'm not going to even go there right there. I'm not going to go there. I almost went too far. I can see my mama, mama, my mama texting me. Yep, that's too far. <laughs> Y'all know my mama still check me like all oh, twelve. Like I don't know about that one, Tony. <laughs> so I know what that comment was gonna get a text message. I got uh, Angelique chiming into this conversation. She said, uh, "Don't know them, but thinking they're better. But God chooses who He chooses on purpose." I'm trying to tell you, He sure does, Bill, baby, Bill. You got to put stuff out to see. Oh, I love that. You got to put stuff out to see the growth and development. If you don't produce, there, there's nothing to assess. If there's nothing to produce, there's nothing to, to assess. I love it. I love it. Vanequa chime into this conversation talking about my mama's and my don't they all. Yeah, they got a right to all to always say whatever. But she's right in most cases. I am a little extreme. I do get I I, I am on the extreme end of the spectrum. I am because I could tell you this, man, like just, just, just sitting in the middle of average guarantees that you will have nothing but average results. If we make average decisions and we live amongst average people and my friends are average, my conversation is average, my TV shows are average, my, my, my work ethic is average. Uh, I'm the first in first out. I'm the last in first out of my job and, and all my behavior speak to average. But yet I believe that greatness is somewhere around me. If those behaviors don't change, I don't care. You can do five Hail Mary. You can wake up and pray in the morning, and morning, noon, and night. You can do all those things. If those average behaviors persist, seed time and harvest, you can only reap average. You can only reap average. And I'm saying that there is something special on the inside of you. And that's why many habits are so important that I cannot continue to sit back and just, what they say, what I thought, tarry for a moment? Just sit back. They say, those that wait upon the Lord shall. They're not talking about just sitting there with your arm crossed chilling. It's about those that wait like a waiter waits on a table. Those that, I'm in preparation for something. Yeah, although I haven't seen my desire in, but I'm in preparation for something. I prepare like I'm like I don't know the masses might be here tonight. Like I, I, I mean, early on I did not prepare that way. Early on I was discouraged because I was like, oh, I should see more, but more people ought to be listening to me. And then I had to move my butt out the way. I had to move my butt out the way and understand that I am not responsible for the masses. That is not my role. In this relationship with the great I am who awakens my I am. Oh, 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 this is going. This is a good point right here. Thank you. This is a great point right here. How does this relationship between the great I am who awakens my I am? 
how does this relationship work? My I am, I am only responsible for the why. Why I do it every day, why I'm building uh, many habits, why I'm looking to self-improvement and continuous development, why I'm, I only owns the why, I only own the why. My awakened I am only owns the why. The great I am who is rich in mercies, who is a, a day is a thousand years and a thousand years is but a, his ways and his thoughts are above our ways and our thoughts. He owns the how. There's no stress on me on how or the, on how to get the, the millions or the masses. There's no stress on me on how to get the masses. I don't own the how. I own the why. And my why is going to keep me consistent when I'm yet to understand the how. Oh my God, that's a bread breaking moment. If my why is stronger than what the manifestation I'm looking for, I prepare, I plan, and I plot my work even when I don't know how. Because faith is the substance of things hoped for, evidence of things not seen. So in the midst of my why, Faith is my substance that eventually my how will show itself. I don't look for the how. I don't, I man, I'm breaking bread right now. I'm breaking bread right now because some of us are looking to, we, we look into the east, west, north, uh, north, north, south, east, and west for all these answers. And the only answers you have to answer is the one that's on the inside of you. Your why resides on the, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. As you drive and develop your why, your how will be made. I had no idea. When I started, said, oh, man, I think I want to be a motivational teacher. I had no idea where I was going to find content. I had no idea on who was going to invite me. I had no idea where I was going to do it. I had no idea YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, any of that stuff I would be on. I had no idea of how I was going to get to the masses. All I knew is I had a burning desire to help people, to help people who similar to me, who've been down some of the same path that didn't believe in themselves enough. All I know is that I have a burning desire to see those people do better, be better, have better. I had a burning desire. We grew, it was eight of us in a three bedroom trailer. It was eight of us in a three bedroom trailer. No heat, no air. Most of the time. And I mean, I, and from that house, it's, it's, it's multiple degrees from that house. It's people changing the world. If it can happen from that three bedroom trailer from my granddaddy had a third grade education. And I think my grandmother might have had a ninth or 10th grade education. And from that house came people like Alana, uh, Alana people like me, people that are like my Jackie or my mom or whoever's on here. From that one house came those seeds. How motivational teacher? Because we didn't look to our surroundings to what we believed in. Oh, that's a bread-breaking moment. That's a bread-breaking moment. We didn't let our circumstances dictate how we saw ourselves. Because we were in a three-bedroom uh, three trailer did not mean that God, we were meant to be there forever. Oh, my God, that's a bread-breaking moment. We've allowed a temporary, uh-uh. Oh, yeah, let me do this. We have allowed external stimuli. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, y'all got to go back and listen to some series to know when I speak external stimuli. We have allowed external stimuli to hold us hostage. When the great I am said, it was never, it, that was never for you to be in a permanent place. It was meant, I love somebody just said, it was meant for me to show you that you learned that I supply all your needs and I am your true source. I am your true source. It was never meant for you to wallow and stay and self-defeat de self and self-despair. It, it was never meant for you to become so emotionally entangled by that anchor that now you make decisions based on what you believe about yourself from that situation. It was never meant that way. Never meant that way. That external stimuli was never meant that way. But we allowed ourselves to emotionally anchor into that external stimuli. Oh, yeah, see. You see, that's what I'm saying. Y'all got to show up to even understand, to hear this conversation. Like, like most people can't even, most, oh my God, can I, I'm going to say this. Most people can't even follow this thought process because they have no idea of what external stimuli is. Most people have no idea how, how they've been anchored and an emotion rooted 
in a situation that happened 20 years ago and is driving my decision making now. I'm, you can 65 years old still making decisions from a 25 year old emotional place. Grown man, a head full of gray, still making decisions like a little boy. Why motivational teacher? Because you anchor in an experience tied by your emotions that drive your decision making today. And I, I'm raising my hand, I want to be great, but I don't wanna do the work because it requires that I look in the mirror and say, man, not only am I better, I'm gonna do better, I'm gonna be better. Cause I own, the great I am through my awakened I am owns my success. I got people chiming into this conversation, y'all all. What's up, big hump? What's up, big hump? Thank you for joining on us tonight, homeboy. Uh, don't let your temporary situation become your permanent solutions. Come on. Say that again, Vaniqua. Uh, hey, cuz, I know you're speaking some great wisdom. I'll listen to it later. I'm in Houston doing an event, man. That's another person who, uh, who's been very consistent. I mean, started a, a catering company, a, a catering company from scratch. Work left. I hope I ain't telling too much of your business. Left a stable job. Left a stable job and say, man, I got a bet on me. And now has double, triple his income from leaving his stable job to starting his own catering company. And I love when he hop in and say, hey, right now I'm at an event, but I'm catching up later. I love that. I mean, it's that kind of consistency that we need from one another. Angelique said, got to do that work. There's no substitute for work. Bill, baby, Bill. Y'all, I'm excited tonight, man, because, you know, I'm going to tell you why I'm excited. I mean, Angelique, actually, this I, I really started this because of something that you said about the content that I was putting out there. I said, you know what? So I decided to go back. I'm listening for, I'm trying to make a greatest hit, greatest hit uh, edition uh, where I put, you know, two, three minutes from from every motivation, some motivational Mondays that I think, you know, would be real good reaching the people uh, who don't listen to stuff like we do. They look for two to three minutes trying to find the most two to three minutes that'll be impactful for somebody just listening through. And I'll listen to like the last 10 of these. And I'm sitting here listening to man, like, Oh my God, this stuff is phenomenal. I mean, not because it's me. I ain't saying it because it's me. I'm saying it because I find that much impact in those words that if I began to, to, to act and become not only a hearer, but a doer, tremendous manifestation. And I'm hearing some of the some of the success stories from you all. I'm hearing like because just hopped on here. So I'll be on in a minute. Like he told me his success story. Um, you know, Devon just gave his success story, man. Like all of that stuff fires me up. I know Vaniqua always gives her story on here. I know Angelique always is giving her story and she's creating content on her own. And this stuff fires me up because I'm not like for me. For me, I'm most excited not by the end result because the end result is inevitable. I mean, it's inevitable. You're going to eventually be the DON. It's, it's inevitable. That's going to happen. I, I'm not, but I'm more inspired by seeing people dig in and do the work, though they have blessed of those who can't feel the nails in my hands and yet believe. I'm more inspired by those people. It's easy to listen. I'm going to say this too. It's easy to listen to somebody in my mind who have attained, they got the million, you know, they got the 200 million Instagram followers. It validates their calling. I'm just telling you in the world, again, it validates what they do. But blessed are those who have yet to see the scars in my hand and still believe. Blessed are those, like you're doing the work and you have not seen the final result. And that not only are you doing it, you, you've embraced it and you're doing it with a smile on your face. I think uh, I think Vanika wrote a comment on the one of the videos she watched earlier this week where, man, I worked 12, 13 hours. I sure didn't feel like going to the gym, but I got to go today. Many habit. I'm doing the work, although I don't feel like doing the work. I'm doing the work. I don't see the results I think I should have. I'm doing the work. And, and, my, and right now, sometime my heart might not be in it. I'm doing the work. I, I ain't got the eyes I want to see. I'm doing the work. They ain't paying me like they should be. But I still do the work. Come on, Edwin. In the process, I'm still doing the work because I'm embracing the process. And I know 
I'm telling y'all what I know. To the degree we're able to embrace the process, Psalm 30, Psalm 60, I, I think we the hundredfold crew. I think we are the hundredfold crew. When you can embrace, um, who said that? Uh, one of the motivational speakers, the uh, ex-Navy SEAL, like he has this, this, this his book called Embrace the Suck. When you can't embrace the suck, the stuff that that makes you want to cry, the stuff that makes you want to that that makes you question your your, your your calling, make you question your judge. When you do the stuff that hurts, if you always do it easy, your life will be hard. If you do it hard, your life will be easy, says Les Brown. Embrace the suck. Don't look for roses every day. Don't look for the rainbows every day. Don't look for the sunshine every day. It's the days where I persist in the midst of what I don't see the sun. It's the days where I make the most gains and I and I experience the most the, the most value from what I do. Like I guarantee you that day, Vaniqua, maybe she didn't get a full workout in when she went to the gym. Maybe she didn't do a full hour and a half. I don't know how long she goes. It's just me putting a number on it. Maybe she didn't do the whole 90 minutes, but she went in there and she did 60. And that 60 was better than the zero she felt like doing. Yeah, uh, it wasn't the 90. It's okay that it wasn't the 90, but it wasn't the zero. It was the 60. That, that's building, baby. That's winning. That's winning. That's winning time. I, 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 you you gain traction in those moments. That's when the great I am said, man, look at that awakened I am. She's, he or she is starting to believe past what they can see. Welcome to faith, ladies and gentlemen. When I can believe past what I see and what I know. And I do believe it's at those moments. Yeah. It's at those moments where we have explosive growth. Got it. <laughs> Angelique, got to give it to them crumbs. Hey, man, I'd rather have a crumb from the table than nothing. Come on, De come on, De Devon. Taking control of your life. That's all it is. I'm no longer, I'm no longer sitting down on the sideline. I'm now saying, okay, I'm an active participant. Life just doesn't happen to me. I make life happen. Vanico said, I did two miles in my neighborhood, wasn't at the gym, but I still got it in. Success. Success. And that was just me, just me adding on to, to what you said. I didn't know the total situation, but I knew it sounded like a success. It sounded like a success. Doing the things that you don't want to do y'all tonight i want to pop on here man because i got super excited listening to them, them other videos and i'm like man if anybody is adding one or two of these new thoughts into their life and they not only being a hearer but a doer i'm telling you 100 fold is in your future i'm not telling you something that i guess might happen i'm not telling you something that might happen i'm telling you what i know I am telling you what, I, I am not making this up by any stretch of my imagination. Anybody that can hear and begin to incorporate thought and start to do 100 fold. Y'all have been phenomenal tonight. Thank y'all for chiming into this conversation. I mean, and y'all were in here deep tonight. And I appreciate you all shouting out and sharing with this community of people waging war on mediocrity. You never can tell which one of your words may bless or encourage somebody on the other end of this live stream. You never can tell what somebody else is going through. And I can tell you this, this thread could be the one thing that helps a person get through the next 15 minutes, get through the next day. And, and if you're able to add that kind of value, thank you all for sharing with this community. That's one thing I hope we create is a transparent community that says like, homie, I don't have it all together. I make mistakes. But all the whole time, I've been a climbing. And there's nothing wrong with not getting it perfect as long as we're making progress. It's your boy, the motivational teacher to the master. Again, this is another edition of Motivational Monday. And until next time, I am challenging you to wage war on mediocrity. Your boy is out. Gee, it ain't no friend to me, huh? Wage war, wage war, wage war, wage war. Against mediocrity, it ain't no friend to me. Wage a war, wage a war.